Hello, this is question four from the 2020 Summer Set of Exams by Cambridge International and it is paper 1-1. You can find a link in the description below that will give you an image of this question and I recommend that you try it before looking at the solution. This question is split into three parts, A, B and C, but it revolves mostly around our understanding of a, of a trigon trigonometric function like this. And here's the graph they've given us. And I've tried to draw it out accurately. I think that's everything there. Now, the first question is simple enough. Part A, it asks us the range of fx. That's as high as it goes and as low as it goes. That's what the range is. So that's um, really whatever this number is here and whatever this number is here. That'll be the answer for us here. So we do this by really understanding what the cosine function looks like. We don't actually have to do any maths. It's uh, something we learn about. So we understand the cosine functions, simple cosine functions uh, look like this, where this is um, one, that is minus one, and this goes up to two pi. But th this part isn't gonna matter because they gave us the two, there's no mystery about this one. It's actually been stretched out, um, or sorry, it's been shrunk in, I guess, because uh, pi is here, and it's, it's within this um, world. But again, we don't need to worry about um, it on the x-axis like that. We're more interested about it on the y-axis. So the question is, what does this do here? And that, that's understood quite well. This guy here is cosine um, x. If we multiply this, it's already been multiplied by one, and it goes one to minus one. Whatever number here just changes this, um, just multiplies it, makes it bigger, so if you think uh, multiply by one, three over two multiplied by one, it becomes three over two. So let me draw, um, yeah, let me draw another picture. Uh, this guy again without the half. If I leave the half off, so this will just be three over two cosine two x. This is simply um, three over two and minus three over two. So that's uh, what this number here basically tells us. The number in front of a trigo trigonometric function tells us that. Now, what does the half do? The half is quite simple as well. The half is just a number added on afterwards. So after we do this sum, let's say we get one. Uh, let's say in this, let's stay over here. Uh, after we do this sum, we get three over two. Add a half on the three over two. What do we get? We must get two. Four over two, which is two. Um, here when we add a half onto minus one, one, minus 1 1.5 we get one or minus one I should say. That's it. That's uh, what the half does. The half basically just adds half onto every one of them or more and more to the point that it ri rises every one up. Another way to think of this question is the half becomes the center point. Instead of the center point being zero, a half becomes this center point. That's what this number here does. It becomes the center of, um, of a normal cosine function, of this cosine function. So this one offsets it. It's called the offset. So it moves it up or down. If it's a minus, it might move it down. This number here stretches it out on the y-axis or shrinks it if it's less than one. So it just gives you these new numbers, these new numbers here. And this guy here stretches or shrinks it in the x-axis. Doesn't matter in this case because they didn't ask us any questions about it. So again, to answer the question for part A, what is the range of this function? Well, it's the range is, we write it like this usually, minus one and two. Or you might want to write y is bigger than minus one, and uh, y is less than two. Something like that is fine. Uh, but really, this bracket here is fine. Just say range equals this. All right, let me rub that out and I'll do part B.
Okay, part B again, there's no maths in this one as well. We just need to understand what happens with functions when we add things onto it, how they behave. They tell us some information here. They tell us the x-axis is tangent to the curve y equals gx. So gx, a new curve, is tangent to the x-axis. So I can actually draw that already because it's just a number being added on. So it should look identical to this guy. Um, and it should look just like this. It will look just like this, except it's been raised up. So it's been raised up by this one. Because we already learned about what this number does. It's the offset. So it must be a plus number. It must rise it up one. That's all. If I rise it up one, it'll become tangent. And that's it. That's it. K equals one. That's our full answer. Um, how would you say? You could write some English about that. You could just say... Uh, k equals one because we need we need to raise it up one and uh, k therefore k equals one so it's as easy as that so let's uh, move on to c so c asks us to reflect fx through the x-axis and make our answer look like this y equals a cosine 2x plus b so let's go ahead and reflect it first um, let's draw one here so i'll draw in the old uh, picture again it looks like this. Let me put in some of these numbers. We'll, we'll even keep the middle of it. The offset was at a half and um, this is at minus one. Okay, reflecting it's quite easy. You, you, could, you would teach a child to do this. You do teach children to do it. You don't teach them what the mathematics behind it is. You just uh, show them how to deal with spatial awareness and shapes and all. But it's coming in useful now. If we rotate that through the zero point, it comes down here and it gets to minus uh, two, I guess. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's bring this whole middle line. That's actually going to be useful. The whole middle line will come down and hit here at minus a half. Let's put a new one of them in. Uh, let's see. What else would we bring down? I guess let's bring this point down. Why not? That'll rotate right to there. Uh, we'll bring the zero. It doesn't rotate anywhere. It's already on the mirror. And at this point here, the lowest point, it'll actually rotate the other way. Up to one. That's uh, where, about where one is. And this will stay where it is. This guy will be, I guess, here. And this point will come down to minus two as well. And if we draw that in, it'll have the same shape. It'll come out slowly. Go up. Uh, let's see, go through there. Turn, go through there. And come down. Flat that out again. That's that's what a mirror image looks like. So we we really just need to understand this red one. I'll keep the red marker actually. I hope you can see it well on the camera. But we just need to understand the red one and really make it look like this. Y is equal. So let's see the a. The number a is important. It tells me how uh, how far from the center it is. So the center is at minus a half on this new one, and this number is at minus two. That's one and a half away. Or this number here is one and a half away. So still three over two is still going to be used. It's still going to be a cosine. Nothing happened the length of it. It didn't get any stretched or... Actually, no, sorry. They told us it's still 2x. I don't need to explain that in that case. They tell us it's still 2x. Let's see the offset. The B, it was offset plus a half. This new one's offset minus a half. Minus a half. Is that it? Um, no, not quite. Because this doesn't look like cosine anymore. Cosines look like this. This is the opposite. So it's actually just a minus. Everywhere there should be a plus, there's actually a minus. And that's it. Uh, really, it was no different than multiplying. Uh, where was the original formula? Uh, yeah, it was, it's gone now anyway. It, there's no different than multiplying this guy by, by minus 1. Let me put that in so we can see it. Uh, the original formula they gave us was fx is equal to 3 over 2 cosine 2x plus a half and reflecting through the through the x-axis is simply multiplying y by a minus basically so instead of fx it's minus fx so it's minus and it's a minus that's where we get this from um okay i think that answers all those questions if you have any extra questions of your own that, that's a hard one to teach i must say it's a hard one to explain everything. It just comes from, it doesn't take years, I would say months of practice dealing with trigon trigonometric functions, uh, 
how they behave, how the number in front changes things, how the number in here changes. This is called the amplitude, the frequency, the offset, how each of these change. And it's very useful for so many fields going forward, uh, real fields like engineering, um, well, physics, anything that deals with waves. And waves involve, are involved in so many things in life, electricity especially. Okay, um, thanks for watching and have a good day.